When McLaren revealed that they were painting the name of a charity on the side of the car, it was a very generous gesture. Space on an F1 car is very hard to come by. Sponsorship money has been inseparable from Formula One since the 1960s and has shaped the direction of the sport. What did teams paint on their car before advertising? And what are some of the most iconic sponsorship liveries in F1 history? Stay tuned as we have a look through the fascinating history of F1 paint jobs. Generous space. Do you think London or New York have expensive property? Try buying some space on a Formula One car. It can cost around $200,000 just to get a few centimeters and a brand name. For a big spot, you'll be looking at the tens of millions. So, when McLaren announced that an Australian charity would be featured on their cars, those involved with the charity were gobsmacked. The charity is called Deadly Science, and they work to provide educational material to underprivileged indigenous people. During the Australian Grand Prix, Google searches more than doubled, so they're getting some good publicity from it. The space was actually donated to them by a McLaren sponsor, Smartsheet. The company gave up the spot for the Aussie nonprofit when they found out about the organization. The founder, said before the Grand Prix that they never could have dreamed that his drawing would be featured on the side of a Formula One car. He said, I was in a pub when I drew the logo on a napkin, and now it will become a world-renowned logo. Hometown hero Daniel Ricciardo was over the moon to hear about the partnership and said that it was great to see the space used to tell the world about work that matters. The F1 team have also given Deadly Science access to their social media account to share information about what they do. McLaren has over 9 million followers, so that's a hell of an audience. Pre-advertising. You might not know that before commercial sponsorship in Formula One, cars were painted with either standard racing colors or the national colors of the team or drivers. In one of the first organized racing events in Europe at the Gordon Bennett in 1900, cars were given colors based on which country they originated from. Blue was given to France, white to Germany, and red to the United States. It wasn't until 1907 that Italy adopted the famous red that would become Ferrari's trademark. The color for Italy originally became the Rosso Corsa from the 1920s onwards and was used by Alfa Romeo, Maserati, Lancia, and most dominantly by Ferrari. British teams ended up adopting the color green because all of the others were taken. In the 1930s, when Mercedes-Benz joined the party, they decided not to paint their cars with the white paint that other German teams were using. That meant that the metal of the cars was left exposed and led to the nickname Silver Arrows for the team. That name is still used today. After World War II and when the competition was officially known as Formula One, teams were allowed more flexibility with which colors they chose. It was generally determined by the nationality of the team, but drivers like Jack Barbum and Bruce McLaren used colors that had no connection to their British teams and were not penalized. Sponsorship Then, in the early 1960s, teams like Lotus and Honda began to use their cars to promote their own car brands. Tire companies and oil suppliers also began to be displayed with small logos the overalls of drivers, but officially, sponsorship was still banned. But that opened the door for colors to be painted with sponsorships in 1968. This was a big moment, and it was a South African team that pioneered it. Team Gunston was established in 1967 as an ambassador for Gunston cigarettes, and to help market the tobacco, the cars were painted bright yellow like the packet of cigarettes were. They certainly stood out in their first non-championship races, and by 1968, the team was ready to join Formula One. It was perfect timing for them, because in 1968, oil titans BP and Shell announced that they would be withdrawing all of their supplies from Formula One. That was a big problem for the sport. At the time, they didn't have much money floating around, and they would have had to consider reducing the size of the competition if they wanted to survive. Instead of cutting budgets, the governing body announced that they would finally allow sponsorship in the prestigious motorsport. So, at the Kailami Grand Prix in South Africa that year, with the bright yellow Team Gunston team on the grid, it was the first time an F1 car was covered in sponsorship livery. It opened the floodgates for big companies to stamp their brands on the famous F1 cars. At the time, most of the interest was from the big tobacco companies like Camel, Marlboro, Winfield, and Lucky Strike. They had the big money, and the F1 teams were in desperate need of income. Coming up, which multicolored car made Michael Schumacher famous? 
and which sponsor led to the most iconic and recognizable Formula One car in history. So don't go anywhere. Red and white. While some argue that sponsorships have ruined the image of Formula One, partnerships have also given rise to some of the most iconic liveries in the sport's history. Partnerships have also given rise to some of the most iconic liveries in the sport's history. One of the most recognizable cars in F1 was the white and red McLaren that blazed a trail from the 1970s up until the 1990s, driving legends like Emerson Fittipaldi, James Hunt, Nicky Lauda, Elaine Prost, and Ayrton Senna all won drivers' championships with the car. All up, the team won nine drivers' championships. The big-lettered Marlboro on the rear wing was unmistakable. Senna's McLaren MP 4x4 is considered one of the most memorable cars in the sport. It was used in the legendary teammate battle between Senna and Prost in 1988. When Lewis Hamilton got to drive his hero's car around the Silverstone track, he was like a kid in a candy store. He couldn't believe that he would be sitting in the same cockpit that Senna once did. And it wasn't the only Marlboro McLaren that made the history books. The MP 4x2 has been ranked the best of all time. Marlboro were so influential in the sport that they sponsored one of Frank Williams' earliest cars. The ISO Marlboro IR was entered into the 1973 World Championship but only placed 10th in the Constructors Championship. Benetton. If you know your Formula One history, then you'll know that Michael Schumacher's first two championships were won with the Benetton team. But did you know the Benetton is actually a global clothing chain? Benetton is a clothing company that now has over 5,000 stores worldwide. It's owned by the Benetton family, who have a combined net worth of at least $10 billion. But the family had a big interest in Formula One and wanted to try their luck in the sport. It all started when Benetton became the main sponsor of the F1 teams Tyrrell, Alfa Romeo, and Tolman throughout the 1980s. Eventually, Tolman offered the Benetton family the team if they wanted to buy them out. They happily agreed and got off to a pretty good start. In their third year in 1988, the constructors finished on the podium. By 1990, they were looking like serious contenders, and their multicolored livery was an instant hit on the paddock. Under team manager Flavio Briatore, the team went on to win the 1994 and 1995 World Championships with a young Michael Schumacher before it was sold to Renault in 2002. Aquamarine March The March 881 was the first car to be designed by Adrian Newey. This man went on to design some of the most innovative cars in Formula One history and has won a total of 10 Constructors Championships with three different teams. That's quite a resume, but we've all got to start somewhere. And for Newey, it was at the March Racing Team for the 1988 season. The car didn't have much success that season and had to retire in 8 out of the 16 races. But you could spot it a mile away because it was a shade of bright turquoise blue. And if it weren't for the head of Leighton House being thrown in jail for fraud, Newey thinks that they might have had a shot at the title someday. The car lives on for its extravagant design and its influence. It was the start of Newey making a splash in Formula One and already with his first car, and he changed the direction of the sport by focusing more on aero efficiency. In a special interview, Adrian Newey got to drive the car around Silverstone. It was his first time driving an F1 car on a circuit, and he said that it felt absolutely lovely. An engineer driving a car they designed themselves? That hasn't happened since the Jays of Jack Brabham. Which sponsorship livery do you think has been the most iconic? And would you rather teams have no sponsors at all? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.